think of you know trying to make a bore one inch through <clears throat> to within five thousandths with a wood chisel. It's impossible. You know, like, <clears throat> the closest way you could do it is a prop come close to it and then start sanding. So how how the pieces are three inches thick and you have to cut a bore, a precision bore. What is it? Uh, three point three eight six. Three and three eighths. Three and three. Well, let's say three and three eighths. Okay. And you're going to mount the head of your piece of junk lathe on your bench. Yeah. And you're going to use a four jar chuck to hold the OD of it. Of the part. Yeah. And then you, you're going to use a chisel to cut the bore. <clears throat> no, what I'm going to do. Yeah, that's another thing. I, what I'm going to do is. Uh, you certainly don't want to take a blank piece of wood and start trying to chisel out the three and three eighths ID. All right. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to take the blanks, I'm going to cut them in half, solid, two solid pieces, two half moons. Really? Then I'm going to get on my bandsaw and I'm going to saw each half circle out. Each half circle. Then I'm going to glue them together. Okay. Then I've got a board close to the, the right dimension. Something I can work with. Our, our wood, I think it was a maple. I think we bought one inch thickness yeah. boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah all so right. you're you're gonna just cut them out with the bandsaw. Well, one piece at a time. One piece at a time. Glue them together and try to then put them together and then bore that hole. And then bore the hole. Yeah. This is 13 16 wall thickness here. So this one, I um, I have dowel pins joining these three yeah, parts together. Yeah. Do you think that's necessary? Because yeah, you yeah, want to locate them precisely. Yeah, that's all right. That's to, to just to join these three together. Yeah. But for these these bulkheads, I don't have pins because the. Do you think just gluing these faces together is enough? Oh well, they're also yeah. held together by the reason why the dowel pins are here is the the. Um, the dowels that go through the length, you know, the length yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. They're not. Um, they don't go into this part, right? Because it's there isn't enough meat. Yeah. Okay. I see. And the reason for these smaller dowels is, yeah, I see what Just you're to saying. Just to join those two I, parts yeah, together. Yeah, join this piece. That's fine. That but your your new, new design is to cut a mortise and tendon on the outer diameter. Yeah. And then make keys. join them together. It, yes. Okay, yes. so you can maybe do that here, and then the dowel pins may not be necessary. Well, I think I'd still use your idea of dowel pins to hold the three pieces okay. aligned while it, they're being machined together. Yeah, right, because that bore is critical. Yeah, yeah, and and this one here, oh yeah, you have a, uh, this is one inch thick, and this, the depth of this step, I don't see a dimension for that, but I'm assuming it's um, about half inch. It should be half inch, half we lost yeah, that, because it's yeah, half inch, it's critical. inch thickness. Yeah, yeah, I know the inch thickness, but I'm I just looking at that. It's not so, critical yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, that's I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I, I you know, it's going to take me time to to figure Work this out, out how to make it. Yeah. But uh, I'll eventually. I've been up against some serious problems before, and and been able to work it out. So, yeah, I think so. I think I can do that. Would it be all right to um, put this flat across all three three pieces? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then, then you don't have to deal with cutting out <clears throat> all these holes and having yeah, it be yeah, perfectly aligned. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the critical thing is that is the alignment. Yes. You want this axis, the center of this bore, to be the, exactly the center of this yes, bore. Yes. And you don't want it to, to, to drift. It needs to be stable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the length of it isn't important because it's focusable. Okay, okay. The critical... We're talking, what, 20... What, let's see from here to to here yeah the the, the length here and the idea here um like yeah. my, my idea for yeah. for the dowel assembly is you can assemble this without gluing it together and then you could test it right yeah without <laughs> gluing them i don't know that that's necessary for me if you could build it. this you know to these dimensions this assembly to, to these dimensions it's gonna work <clears throat> I think we have nine inches of focusability on the, the oh, cheap okay. um, <clears throat> focus two by bot. This <clears throat> this is the eyepiece here. Yeah, and the eyepiece. It uh, mounts here, and this is where you look. Well, it mounts it mounts to the focus tube. 
Oh, so this oh, is all okay. stuff that I'll provide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Translate the focus to. There's a. Um, <clears throat> There's a there's a uh, rack and pinion. Yeah, it's a rack and pinion. And how does that focus tube get attached to this face here? There's a uh, an outer uh, diameter that fits uh, slips over this part here. Okay. <clears throat> and then there's set screws or machine screws. We'll go into this box. Yeah, it's supposed to go into the sheet metal. Okay. Or whatever is yeah, plastic yeah. or whatever this housing yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. This was a mead objective, and I, I think I bought it in a Celestron or a mead. I mean, they're basically the same thing. I see. Focus <clears> to, <throat> you know, it was like five bucks off eBay or something, and then the objective was twenty dollars, so we're about twenty five dollars. The wood's yeah. going to be a lot more expensive than the, yeah, well, the optical is. hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You slide. Like I said, this is this is ideal. This is what I was looking for. And this is very good. Okay. <clears throat> very, very good. Yeah, then that this is no longer becomes a critical dimension. That was three or half inch dollars, yeah. So the, the, the mortise and tendon, how are you gonna align each joint, you know, each cut? How are you gonna register clock them so that they're all in line? Are you gonna generate the mortise and tendons on the outer diameter in one, I may, one uh, operation? Is I that may, the idea? I, I, I would think I may uh, make these rectangle first. Okay. And then cut the mortise and tendon into the half this depth and then get the bandsaw and saw them out. Ground. Okay. That's a good idea. That's my thought. And then, and then of course, I, I, it would be a bandsaw cut and I... I, I, I would leave them a little oversized and I'd sand them so they, you know, look decent. Right. And then when you you have them square and you cut the mortise and tendon, are they going to be joined together somehow? So yeah. That, yeah. I'll, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. How are you going to join them together? Just with a clamp? Yeah, probably. Because it'd be a, at that point, they'll just be a solid block. Yeah. You don't want it to slip, though. What's that? You, if you have them clamped together, you know, a stack of these things, they're eat, they're. There's yeah, what, I nine do, of them? I may do it. So well, nine if, inches if thickness? They're all, if they're all, no, I don't have to do them all together. If they're all exactly the same size, I can do one at a time. Really? And they'll all and be... And then it'll all line up. Okay. As long as the outside square on them is all the same. I see. It's, it's doable. And, and now that I know the critical thing is, is it's this center to that center. That's the important thing. Do you want me to produce new drawings, not as if my, my drawings are no, fantastic? No, no need, no need, no need. This is, like I say, this is perfect. This is all you need. This is what I was looking for. Okay. Couldn't ask for any more. Beautiful job. Did you do this at the lab? With their, their, I did their, it at home on my computer. Do you have a I printer have, this big? Uh, I, did, I printed it uh, somewhere else. I didn't print it at home. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And then just cut a flat in this yeah, part yeah. so that we can mount a well, tripod I'm, to it. Yeah, right, right. And then, you know, throw a, tw a quarter 20 machine screw. Um, you want a, a tap hole in here? It could be tapped in the wood or it could be yeah. a thread insert because, you know, it's going to get beat up because you're going to be in disconnecting it from the tripod. Yeah. So yeah. you probably want a thread they, insert. They, they make them. Um, yeah, they do. I, I look for them. Threaded inserts. Yeah. And uh, the press in there. Well, that's kind of an afterthought item. The other afterthought yeah. item is yeah. that uh, yeah. the subjective needs to insert into the bore, and so you need some way of securing it so it doesn't fall out. Oh, yeah. Well, what if we... You have a set screw or something uh, simple. Yeah, uh -huh. It doesn't need a lot of force. It just needs to prevent it from slipping yeah. out. And then the other afterthought is then making this light tight. Light tight. Now, that, that I would need your help. I mean, the idea that I had was some kind of light tight cloth because you don't want it to add any kind of undue strain to the assembly, right? Right. If you had cloth or something, it, cloth, would, it would, yeah, that was elastic, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not aluminum, though. I think it's like brass foil. Yeah, it would need to be something like foil to be trans to be opaque, completely opaque. That's something I'm thinking about. You could even do it in wood if you could think about it, but then you know you're attaching panels that are gonna. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I mean, you could make the whole thing out of solid wood. <laughs> that would be certainly strong enough, and Wouldn't then you that be nice? then you eliminate the need for the. Yeah, the right, right. 
but that that's beyond way beyond my capabilities. Well, you could do it with a good lathe. I don't have a good lathe. No, but I mean, if you had uh, like a big uh, thirteen inch. Well, if, yeah. If I had a if I had a metal working lathe, yeah, I'd I'd make these out of aluminum. <laughs> No, he wants it out of wood. I know. Yeah. Well, that's the whole idea here. I could use wood. You could do it in wood too. I mean, you could make it solid. You just instead of making nine of these, you'd make you know yeah, thirty. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 They don't sell. It's pretty wood. heavy then. It right. would they be don't heavy. Sell wood tubing off the shelf. What? They don't sell wood tubing off the shelf. No, <laughs> not that I know of. Now, strength is important here. Yeah. You don't okay. want it to flex. It's sag. Yeah, that's right. I, I thought of that too. I thought of that too. So you know the, the telescope body that's sold commercially is you know it's a sheet metal tube, so it's pretty strong. Yeah, it's stiff. Yeah. You want it to be stiff. Yeah. 